Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 8th of April 2019 and the time has just gone 12.12 British summer time. Uh, it's been a fairly quiet start to the European session today. Um, it, it was a fairly subdued session in, in Asia overnight and that's basically followed on to what we've seen here in Europe today. Uh, some of the major headlines um, over the weekend, um, the Chinese government uh, released a statement um, stating that there was new progress made in the trade talks between the US and China, which took place, uh, which finished up, the most recent round finished up at the back end of last week. Uh, there was also an article on the Chinese government website stating that uh, Beijing are looking to cut the reserve ratio requirement at uh, commercial banks in China uh, by trimming the, the requirement uh, that will actually essentially encourage uh, lending by banks, and this is a move that is that um, the Beijing authorities have, um, have, have have acted on on a number of occasions uh, in recent years. Essentially, it's a way of actually boosting liquidity, and the, and the idea is that a small smaller businesses and individuals can get get uh, get get um, easier access to loans that'll actually help kind of stimulate the economy. And some of the economic indicators we've seen out of China in the last few weeks have been shown that we seem to be kind of over the kind of the worst of the recent kind of slowdown in economic activity. So this is something that China could do quite regularly. Economy goes through a bit of a soft patch or a softer patch, and then the Beijing authorities uh, react to it. Uh, there continues to be uncertainty in relation to Brexit. As it stands, the UK is set to leave the European Union uh, on Friday, which is the 12th of April, and the default position is no deal, unless something is agree agreed between now and then. Um, there has been talks between the uh, UK Conservative Party and the UK Labour Party. That hasn't really amounted to anything so far. On Wednesday, which is the 10th of April, the EU, EU are going to be having an emergency summit, uh, and at the summit will be the a, a re extension request, uh, which Theresa May has already lodged. It would be um, Theresa May is looking to ex extend Brexit date until the 30th of June. There's talk that the European Union don't aren't in favour of a short-term uh, extension; that they're more they're, they're more keen for a, a, a quote flexible one-year extension. Um, it will be for the time being. The financial markets aren't pricing in the reality of a no deal, so the pound has removed a whole lot today. But even though the default position is for the UK to leave without a deal. Uh, uh, at the end of the week. For the time being, the markets aren't pricing that in. So essentially, the markets that are assuming some sort of deal will be arranged between now uh, and the next couple of days, or else that the EU will grant Theresa May some sort of an extension. Um, so take a look now at some of the major markets and see how things have been going. Starting off with the FTSE 100, um, it is worth pointing out European equity markets had a good had a good run last week, so a bit of a move to the downside today isn't entirely a bit of a surprise. Uh, it's a very similar picture across the various uh, equity markets I'm going to discuss now in the next few minutes. Starting off with the FTSE 100, it's been a, a nice uh, rebound uh, move since late December. A nice series of higher highs and higher lows. Uh, only recently we've actually got up to here at a level not seen since early October, so I'll give you an idea of the kind of multi-month highs that we're reaching. Uh, the market continue, the market continues to be in this upward trend. Uh, should we push on higher from here? We could be looking at targeting the kind of mid-September high of 7,558. Any moves to the downside might find some support in around this area here. Big psychological number of 7,400. And even if you drift below that, support might be found from this area here in around 7,370. And if you have a size of break below that, you could even head back down towards this red line here, which is the 200 moving average, and that comes to play. Uh, at 7,220 or even the kind of 7,200 mark. We see a lot of kind of consolidation in around that area. So these are areas to keep an eye out for should we uh, break south of 7,370. Take a look now at what's going on over in Germany on the DAX. So the DAX, um, similar to the EFTC, it's been bouncing back nicely since December. Uh, we can see here that we've got quite a steep move to the upside in the last couple of weeks. Um, the DAX seem to have kind of run out of steam in around the kind of the 12,000 mark, or just, just north of 12,000. The DAX seems to have run to a bit of resistance. Um, on a few occasions, it's kind of been hanging around there, but hasn't really kind of moved that much beyond it. At the same time, hasn't really moved that much below either, but it seems to be at 12,000, the big psychology number, is acting as a bit of a sticking point. Um, it's, an upward, it's been a solid upper trend for many months now, and it's been a, a particularly sharp upper trend for the last couple of weeks. 
and should the upper trend continue on from here we could be looking at, looking at targeting this area here in around 12,120 uh, we can see on a few occasions it acted as support in July and also in August last year and acted as a resistance uh, in, briefly as in September last year so keep an eye out for that area there and should we break north of that we could be looking at heading up towards the late September high in around the kind of 12,000 <coughs> excuse me should we break north of 12,120 uh, we could be looking heading up towards the kind of late September high this area here in around 12,460 uh, that kind of region and should we go beyond that we could be looking at heading up towards the kind of uh, 12,600 area any move to the downside in, uh, in the DAX might, might see new buyers enter the fold uh, seeing as buying on the dip has been a popular strategy with traders for the last number of months so if we show you drift lower from here we could find support coming to play in around the 11,823 mark or even from this red line here the 200 200 day moving average which comes to the play just north of 11,700. I'll take a look now at what's going over in the US and the Dow Jones. The US markets are in even better shape than their European counterparts whereby the European counter the DAX and FTSE have been uh, recently racking up multi-month highs where um, the, the, the Dow and the, so the, S the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 which we'll take, now, we'll take a look at the S&P 500. I'll do that down a second. Uh, are not too far away from the old they're not only are they at multi multi month highs but they're also at very fairly close to their all-time high so as you can see here on the S&P 500 it's managed to retrace the vast majority of the ground that was lost between October the all-time high and the lows of late December so the more a market retraces of the previous big move which is this major sell-off here between October and December the more likely it is to keep continuing so we've we've seemed we've seen to fall back to about 80 and 90 percent of the of the negative move so I say it's likely that we're going to continue to push on higher from here uh, and if you do push on higher from here on the uh, the S&P 500 we could be looking at moving beyond the kind of big psychological number of 8,900 sorry part of the 8,900 apologies nowhere near that 2,900 2,900 is the next big kind of psychological number we're currently at about 2,889 on the S&P 500 and if you continue to press on higher from here we could be looking at targeting 2,900. And if we go beyond that, uh, the next day to keep an eye for will be this region here, which is essentially you know, the all time highs at 2,940. And obviously, buying on the dip has been a popular strategy in the last few months. So if you do manage to drift lower uh, on the SP 500, support might be found from this region here, this line along here, which comes into play in around the 2,865 area. And even should we drift below that, uh, support might be found from the uh, 2,000 and 2,820, 2,815 area, which is this line along here. Now, if you draw a line between the highs of uh, the highs of mid-October, uh, mid mid-November, and mid-December, it's somewhere around the kind of 2,817, 2,820 mark. That area acts as fairly decent uh, resistance uh, when the market was pushing higher in March. So the possibility it may act as support should the market have a reasonable uh, size sell-off in the near term. Take a look now on the Dow Jones. Similar situation provided the Dow Jones has managed to recoup uh, the vast majority of the ground that it lost uh, essentially between October and December. So since December it's making a very solid comeback. As you can see here, we're we're expecting the Dow to open above um, 26,300. If we can press on higher from these levels here, we could be looking heading up toward this area here, just shy of 27,000. Big psychological number, and keep in mind the you know, the all-time high was was uh, was uh, was north of 26,590. So apologies, 26,950. So somewhere around the kind of not not too far away, 27,000 was the all-time high. We could be looking at, at uh, pushing up towards that level again, uh, should they kind of bullish uh, the trend that's been in place for uh, for a few months to continue. Uh, but even if you do manage to have a bit of a, a move to the downside, support might be found from this area here, uh, which come, which is the which is in in around the um, which is the kind of this this trend line this uh, area from this this uh, line across here from the early November high of 26,278 and even if you drift below that uh, the big kind of psychological support number of 26,000 might act as support and even if you drop below that this blue line here the 50 moving average which comes to play just north of 25,700 
by Acta Support. We can see here on a few occasions, um, only the back end of last month, the 50 day moving average acted as support, and if a metric is acted as support recently, it makes it more likely that it will do again in the near term. Uh, starting off, uh, I'll take a look now at the gold market. So, gold has broadly been, gold has been bouncing back uh, since August, and really since about mid November, uh, gold has been in a fairly solid upward trend, a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. But we have seen a bit of a sell-off, uh, it, it, the sell-off in both February and also March has been really interesting for a buy. The market had a fairly sizable sell-off in March and the lows in March took off the lows in, in early February. But when the market managed to push higher, the highs in, uh, the highs in March failed to take off the, uh, the highs in February. But then again, that being said, when the market sold off again in April, we'd seem to kind of hold above, we seem, seem to have kind of held above the March low. So, Essentially, while we still remain above the kind of the, the, uh, the March lows here in around the in around the uh, 1,280 mark, if you can hold them above that, it's likely we could see uh, another move move to the upside because the, the wider upper trend is still very much in play. And to be honest, even if you look at the kind of the, the lows of, uh, of January in around the kind of 1270, 1276, 1280 in February and March rather. If you can hold above that, it's likely that we could see further gains to be made. We could see the continuation of the wider upward trend. And if you can press on higher from here, uh, keep an eye out for uh, the, 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 late, the late March high, uh, this area here, which comes into, which comes into play in at um, 12.24, which is essentially this, this high here. And should we go, should go, should we go beyond 13.24 here? We could be looking at targeting uh, the, the, the 2019 high of, of 13.46 in around here. If you do manage to break below this area here, the kind of 12.76, 12.80, we could be looking at heading back down towards the 11.65 area, or perhaps even low, heading back down towards the red, this red line here, the trending moving average, which comes to play just shy of 12.50. So kind of it, it, uh, the trending moving average comes into play at 12.48. Taking a look now, what's going on on the oil market, starting up to break crude. So oil has had quite a positive run recently. Uh, there's been an, a concerted effort from, from OPEC to cut back on supplies, so we're seeing that. We're also seeing, given that there's overall optimism in relation to, say, US-China trade talks and the Chinese economy is doing a bit better than it was at the beginning of the year, uh, we're seeing we've seen oil reach uh, volume of highs. Granted, the moves to the upside haven't been spectacular, but nonetheless, it kind of continues, continues to kind of slowly but surely drive higher. So the trend for the last few months has certainly been to the upside. We're now firmly above the maturity moving average, which comes to play at 69 spot 45. And if you can hold above that, we could look at pressing on higher from here and looking at potentially targeting this area here, uh, the kind of early November high, which comes into play at 73 spot 53. And even if you do drop below the maturity moving average, uh, we could uh, we could be looking at looking at heading back down towards the uh, the early kind of mid to late March lows of in around six six dollars per barrel. It's a similar situation on WTI, whereby the market's been in a solid upward trend for a number of months. In fact, today we, we've actually managed to keep actually eat up another multi-month high, another uh, high not seen since early November. So the trend is very much to the upside. You can see how. That the this red line here, the trending moving average is likely acting as support and should be hold up on the support, uh, which comes into play at 61 spot 44. It's likely we could see further moves to the upside. Uh, and going from here, uh, pressing higher, keep an eye out for this area here, uh, which is was in late November, uh, in, in October rather, in at 67 spot 80. And should we have a move to the downside, and should we actually break below the trending moving average in at 61 spot 44? This area here, $60, $60 might act as support. Not only is it a big psychological number, but also we can see on a few occasions the market uh, kind of $60, $60 on, uh, in, on the way up. But the market was pushing higher, did manage to act as resistance. So it's possible that previous uh, old resistance might become new support. Take a look now at the euro dollar. So the euro has been in a fairly solid uh, downward move for the last few months. Uh, we can see here between a nice series of lower lows and lower highs. Granted, I'm fully aware that at the rally in uh, in mid to late 
March managed to, managed to take out the highs of, of February, but as you can see, since then there's been a solid move to the downside. And should the wider downward move in uh, euro dollar continue, we could be looking at retesting the, uh, the March lows here, down around here in at one spot 11.76. And should you break below that, uh, we could be looking heading back down towards one spot 11.10. If you do manage to have a, have a move to the upside, Resistance might be coming to play in around the one spot 13 area. We can see on a few, on a few occasions it did manage to act as we have seen a bit of consolidation in around that mark. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting one spot 14. And the big area to keep an eye out for for euro dollar to the upside will be one spot 1448. It acted. Um, it was the high in um, it was the high of mid mid, uh, mid mid to late March, and we did we really need to kind of break beyond that before we can actually say that we kind of snapped out of the recent negative move. Keep in mind, I'll be discussing in a second, but we do have a, have a, a meeting from the European Central Bank on Wednesday, so please keep an eye out for that. And lastly, now on the markets front, I'll take a look at pound dollar. Like I said, even what's going on at Brexit, the EU summit on Wednesday in relation to the, the, the extension and also a possible deal between the Conservatives and the Labour Party. So keep an eye on that if you're going to trade any sterling crosses. Um, Pound dollar has been a nice solid upward trend for the last few months, a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. And even though it's been drifted lower in more recently, essentially while we kind of hold above the kind of psychologically important 130 mark, which essentially coincides with the 20 moving average, this red line here. To be fair, the 20 moving average, average is about below that. It's in at one spot, one one spot 29.78. If we can hold above that metric, it's likely that we could see further gains to be made in, in pound versus US dollar. And if you can press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting one spot 32. And beyond that, we could be looking heading up towards the one spot 3360 area. Uh, if you do have a size of the break below the 30 moving average, the next area of potential uh, support could be down around here. Uh, the mid-February lows in around the one spot 2775 area in around here. What I'll do quickly now is have a quick look at the week ahead. Uh, if you go to our website, cmcmarkets.com, and under news and analysis, you will see the uh, you will find the week ahead article. Uh, and looking ahead to Wednesday, uh, we have both the EU summit and the and the Brexit deadline, and this is also going to tie in Wednesday and Friday, whereby the EU summit um, is likely that we could see uh, the extension of the Brexit delay um, being passed. But as I said, the the current Brexit date is the 12th of April, which is Friday. Uh, but there's talk that the EU are keen to have a longer uh, extension, say somewhere in the region of one year. On Wednesday, we also have the ECB uh, break decision. Um, the policy itself is likely to remain unchanged, but any kind of comments in relation to the size of the proposed tar uh, target liquidity plan or any anything else in relation to changing of monetary policy, uh, that's going to be kind of carefully watched. On Wednesday, we have full-year figures from Tesco. Uh, on Wednesday, we have half-year figures from ASOS. Uh, on Wednesday, for a busy day, we have the Fed minutes. So the the, the most recent uh, Fed meeting, we, we get minutes from that particular meeting, so it gives an idea of what the Fed are looking at. And on Friday, we have Chinese trade figures. So we also be keeping an eye for what the how, how the Chinese economy is doing, uh, particularly see how they kind of export side, see how they've been impacted by the Chinese tariff, or the American tariffs rather, and see the Chinese imports, which gives a flavour for domestic demand uh, in China. Uh, and then as we go to Friday, we, we are back around to reporting season. Uh, we, we have Q1 figures from JP Morgan Chase and Wells Fargo over in the US. Uh, just before I go, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to, feel, feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. That's all for me this week. Thank you very much.